Well, the news of the day, um, to an extent, was the buzzwords that come out when you hear players only meeting. You hear that? And everybody's antenna <laughs> perks up and you start looking around. What, is it, what does this mean? Is this good? Is this bad? Who's taking control? Is it leadership? Is it... Your thoughts before I get into mine on <laughs> the players only meeting. Non-talking point. Just totally overblown. Not that big of a deal. They happen way more than you think. And um, honestly, it's probably normally a great thing, especially at this point in the season. Um, just getting the guys from the leadership on the team and kind of getting everyone on the same page and kind of under understanding expectations. I, I think that's probably you know, what this one was about. Uh, I don't think it's like guys missing practice and guys not showing up and guys are missing the team playing. Like normally when you hear players only meeting, you think those type of things are going on, but uh, none of that stuff's going on with this football program and this football team. So not big deal. Um, I, I think it's, it's something that's just got to get overblown from the outside. Yep. Um, I could echo all of that. It's look, when you hear the term, there are a lot of different reasons why this may happen. If you've got a bunch of guys failing drug tests, everybody's talking about transferring, you've lost three games in a row, the coach is about to get fired, and it's a disaster, and you hear players only meeting, well, that's trying to put the Titanic back together with duct tape. And like that, that's that is your program's a disaster, and you're not going to get there. Some of that, not all of it, but some of that was going on last year, where it was just over the last two years, the culture had fallen apart. And there were certainly plenty of guys out there playing as hard as they could, which is why they won late season games both of those years. But as a whole, the program was not in a very good spot. And that's why there was a change made. Um, you hear players only meeting and a lot of people will spring to the talking point and say, oh, this just means you're not very good and there's panic inducing. And it, okay, well, that may not be the case. This players only meeting from what Jaden Daniels communicated and what the receivers are talking about was pretty simply like, yeah, uh, we're not throwing the ball well enough. Keep getting open and I'll make an effort to get the ball down the field a little bit more. <laughs> and that's not what he said, you know, explicitly, but Brian Kelly said that's the plan. And Jaden Daniels says they're getting on the same page. So this honestly, you can call it a players only meeting if you would like, or you can call it 10 guys in a room talking about, their football season, if you want to call it that. <laughs> like this is, um, yeah. it sounds a lot more important than it is. Yeah. Um, if I want to take some sort of uh, overlying talking point from the first three days of this week, it is that it may go horribly wrong, but LSU's going to throw the football down the field this week. I mean, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah, I think you, you kind of saw this coaching staff kind of have those emphasis, especially, you know, I know it's just Southern and everything, but we see k kind of have that, that first game where you really don't don't have the success you want to have. It was a huge emphasis. Hey, we got to get this guy. To I don't care if it's a run play, screen play, whatever it is. We got to get the, the ball in this guy's hands. I think now anytime you throw for five yards and a half, I think everyone in that building knows that's just absolutely unacceptable and they got to fix that. They got to turn that around quick. So I think being at home, having the crowd behind you um, and being able to have these weapons on the outside, who I think the, this Tennessee secondary, they aren't world beaters. They, they gave up 450 yards passing to Anthony Richardson. And I don't think their receivers have any, you know, anywhere remotely close to the talent we have in this locker room. So uh, I think, you know, now more than ever, um, they know when you're going against that quarterback, that coordinator and that team and how fast they're going to be going. Uh, you're not just going to be able to, you know, go through a sleepless first half and, you know, have five yards pass in the second half. It's just got to get out of hand. So, yeah, now more than ever, I see them making it a huge emphasis. We got to get some targets on the field. We got to give these guys some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. I mean, that's what me and you fell in love with when we went to camp last year. We are seeing these guys go up and make plays time and time again, and those just guys, they haven't had those opportunities this, this season. So hopefully Jaden can give those guys some more chances because I, I really think they match up well against this Tennessee secondary. So I went back and looked at the Jaden Daniels highlight tapes from his freshman and sophomore seasons uh, starting at Arizona State. Uh, 2020, the COVID year, a little bit of 2019 as well, um, and a little bit of, of last season too. And the question is, okay, is he pushing the ball down the field in these games? And the answer was yes, he did. He threw some, over the, uh, some crossing routes over the middle. He threw some deep balls and, and hit some touchdown passes. The um, the theme of those throws were guys were wide <laughs> open. Um, and I look, I'm just calling it like I see it. I mean, I'm looking at him hitting deep balls down the middle of the field, and he did. He hit, he hit eight or ten of them. But they're, they're guys running free. I mean, for those of you that locked into 2019 highlights, all of the pandemic, and have some of those highlights kind of burn in your brain, 
remember the the first touchdown of the A&M game through the air where Jamar got behind the defense and he's just running clean. And Joe hit him on the stride and it was a 65-yard touchdown. They looked like that. Arizona State had a guy that had beaten the defense. There was maybe busted coverage. It was very rarely a one-on-one jump ball situation or you're know, trying to fit one with the safety coming over the top. It was, we got him on this one. And I still think he's going to make those throws if they're there. They're just not usually going to be there. And so the emphasis is going to have to be, okay, what do you see? Is it worth the shot? And Jaden Daniels has not seen anything that he felt was worth the shot to this point. That's got to change in a hurry. Yeah, it does. And I think anytime you, you have receivers that match up well, and I think you really got a bunch of you know guys who can really go up and get those jump balls. When you look at BTJ, when you look at Malik, who's not the taller receiver, when you look at Kayshawn, these are really, really athletic guys who I think deserve those one-on-one opportunities. You saw you know, when you were playing Alabama, I know it's 2019, it's like the magical place, but um, you know, Joe's throwing it, those jump balls up, and he's giving those guys opportunities to, to go make plays. And sometimes you know, you may not come down with those, but um, you got to trust your receivers. You know, this It's a strong suit of this offense. It's like you got too many guys who can make plays and, and get open time and time again. Uh, we have to do it now. I think now more than ever, um, you know, you, you got to, you know, give those guys chances to make plays. But it's kind of a slippery slope, especially with, with Jaden, because you know how much he values the football. He doesn't want to turn it over. To think that it's going to be just a total 180 and he's going to go out there and just light it up, I, I would love to see it, but I just don't know. I, I think we're still going to see a little bit of the Jaden we've kind of seen uh, throughout the season. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see mostly that. You're going to see – a guy that does take care of the football and that does um, that does run it uh, more than most quarterbacks would. I think if you if you go go we'll go back to old LSU highlights because that's what we're talking about here. If you go back to the Sugar Bowl um, against Illinois when Rohan is just ripping it thirty five do- yards down the field more often than not, like mm-hmm. that's not what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We're talking about six or seven shot throws over the course of four quarters. And I'm not talking about all go routes, but some, you know, over the middle of the field, deep corners, just just keeping teams honest so that they can't creep up and, and try to to say that we're just going to take things away. I, I was listening to Jacob and T. Bob this morning, and they were talking about the, you know, you hit the the shot, quote unquote, down the field to Malik to kind of ice the game against Mississippi State on that fourth and three, and that was kind of a check, and they had the look they wanted, and they got one on one. And he did put the ball up there for his guy to make a play, and he did it because he's better player than the guy Mississippi State had mm-hmm. out there. And and so when we talk about shot plays, it don't all have to be 50 yards in the air, but just one-on-one opportunities down the field when you create those matchups. And you know, I don't know if LSU's done a perfect job of creating enough of those matchups, but they have the ability to do that. And that's the one play I would go back to and say, okay, yeah. that's that's really good. Yeah, that was definitely really good. And I, I think in, in a lot of times when you look at the box score and you look at the stat sheet at the end of the game, you're like, man, what is the coordinator doing? Denbrock, he's terrible. What's like, what's going on? And I continue to watch this tape. And <laughs> guys are just, he's drawing up plays to get guys open. And so it's up to Jaden. I, I know in that Mississippi State game, he, uh, you know, Kayshawn was getting a lot of double teams. And even in this Auburn game, uh, he was getting a lot of double teams. If me, I'm a quarterback, I'm licking my chops. I mean, we just saw Joe Burrow against the Dolphins. They're double teaming Jamar every chance they get. What does he do? Go to T. Higgins, man. T. Higgins is getting one-on-one time and time again. Go take your one-on-one matchups. And to me, at this LSU roster, if you want a double-team Kayshawn, great. That's amazing. We still got Dre, still got Malik, still got Jack Best, still got BTJ, and these guys can make plays, man. So if, if you're going to take away a weapon, to me as a quarterback, that's an easy one-on-one matchup that you're staring down the barrel at. you got to give those guys opportunities to make plays. As problems go with the football team through a month, this one feels fixable, maybe too strong, improvable, if I want to use a, a more mild word. Mm-hmm. This one feels like something they can significantly get better at. Um, there have been times, if you just can't stop the run, man, that's hard to get better at unless you just put 10 guys up there. Mm-hmm. If your defensive linemen just every single week are not good enough to to throw off offensive linemen and get stops, like that's just so hard to get better at. This situation, when you've got a problem here, it's that he's too careful, and you know that the weapons exist. So I don't, again, I think I've been kind of labeled as a little bit pessimistic on this year's team, a little too optimistic when it comes to the springtime at the box. Maybe that's the case. (laughs) But if I'm a little bit pessimistic on this team, I think I I, I go back to being what I think is, is just realistic. 
I think they can get better at this over mm-hmm. time. I don't think they're going to become, you know, a juggernaut offensively passing the football. But I think they can get better at this specific aspect of the game of creating a little bit more chunk plays. They're last in the league in 20-yard passes. I think they can be better than that. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.